Okay, so we're going to talk about in this presentation um, the fundamentals of speed training. What is it? Why do we do it? And how do we implement it into our training for athletes? So, first off, what are we talking about when we talk about speed? Um, so, basically, we're talking about high velocity locomotion, fast movement from point A to point B. So, how can we get from point A to, to B in as little time as possible? And this is going to be specific on the athlete and the sport. So if we look at speed, if we look at sort of the definition we posed for speed, moving from point A to B in as little time as possible, then if we look at a swimmer, they require speed. A cyclist, they require speed, but they need to do that in different, uh, different means of locomotion as someone like a sprinter. So a swimmer needs to be fast in the water, a cyclist needs to be fast in their bike, a 100 meter sprinter needs to be fast from the start for, in one straight line for 100 meters. And if we look at something like a, a team sport athlete, like a soccer player, they might need to perform, you know, three or four short, short bursts of speed for only maybe 10 to 20 meters and in different directions. So these are all different speeds depending on the athlete and the sport. And also in this video, we're going to be referring to land-based sport when we're talking about speed. Um, so why why should we train for speed? So essentially, speed is going to be advantageous for many athletes. Um, if you think of any sort of not any but many team sports, uh, track events, things like that. Traveling from point A to B can mean that we're beating the opponent to the ball, we're crossing the finish line before our opponent, or we're actually reaching our opponent before he can score a goal, for example. So there's many, um, there's many reasons that speed can be important, but it's going to be specific to each sport. So speed can basically broken, be broken down into a few different general categories. The first of which we're going to talk about is acceleration. And acceleration is character, characterized um, specifically by its longer ground contact times and its higher requirements for force. And also when we look at the mechanics, as we're going to look in this video, there is more of a forward lean and a low foot clearance, which we'll have a look at. But before we get into the video, what I'm referring to with longer ground contact times is that each step on the ground is going to be longer during the acceleration phase as it is when we are at top end speed. Also, the higher force requirements are um, required because of the fact that when we're accelerating, we have little to no um, momentum. So the complete inertia of our body weight has to be overcome when we're accelerating. So let's have a look at this video. So maybe this will give us a better idea of what we mean with our mechanics. So this is a guy doing a block start in slow motion. So we get a nice good look at what he's doing. So if we can see that first step from the blocks, he has this nice big acceleration, uh, this nice big extension, sorry, a nice straight line. And his whole body is leaned about 45 degrees forward. And as we can see, his foot's you know, pretty low to the ground. It's just clearing the ground by a few centimeters, and that's going to be efficient for our acceleration. So moving on, um, how do we actually train for acceleration? So exercises are going to be key, are going to be uh, any starts from a low position, such as the block starts we just saw, or three-point starts or two-point starts or whatever is going to be specific to your sport. Uh, things like resisted sprints, um, also slow jumps and bounds and strength training. So the reason that um, the slower type jumps and bounds are going to be beneficial for acceleration is because it mimics the, um, the higher force requirements and slower velocities of acceleration as opposed to faster jumps and bounds. So what I mean by this is basically um, any sort of vertical or horizontal jumping or um, or ballistic or throwing type activity that is going to have longer ground contact times. So things like maybe weighted jumps or 
jumps from a bottom up position, counter movement jumps, as opposed to intensive plyometrics like drop jumps and things like that. Um, and also because of the really high force requirements, strength training is probably going to be an important part of acceleration. Because if we can't produce uh, a good amount of force, doesn't matter how uh, how quickly we can do it, we simply don't have enough force to overcome our the inertia that we need. So moving on from acceleration, now we're going to be talking about maximum speed. And basically this is char char characterized by faster ground contact times and greater reactive or elastic strength requirements. So what I mean by that is basically when we're in, when we're uh, at top speed, we have this more upright position, as we can see uh, with Usain Bolt right here. And each step of the ground is going to be very, very quick. Um, and each stride we take is is a lot longer. We're almost we have all this momentum. We're almost gliding and carrying the momentum that we already have. So we don't have enough time to produce a high amount of force at these top end speeds. So that's where this sort of reactive elastic strength comes in. It's more our uh, muscles and tendons that are quickly acting as almost like an elastic band. They're quickly getting stretched, and the more uh, the more stiff that we can have our our tendons and our sort of muscular tendon junctions, then we are able to carry that momentum more efficiently. So to train for uh, maximum speed, a really high velocity movements are going to be the most beneficial. Things like flying sprints, uh, wicket drills, over speed runs, and also things like intensive plyometrics um, and also isometrics. So these are pretty given. They're just basically high speed and technique work, the flying sprints, over speed sprints and stuff. The, fl the fast plyometrics um, are recommended due to what we talked about. Um, each step that we take is extremely short and sharp. And pl these plyometrics are going to allow us to get that, you know, high stiffness in our, uh, in our, in our muscles and tendons in order to uh, efficiently propel our, the momentum we already have. Isometrics are put in here. Um, these can be beneficial due to each step we take at these really high velocities. The theory is that the muscle does not actually um, connect and lengthen. It more so stays at a quasi-isometric uh, position while the tendon is um, the actual structure that is going to lengthen and then subsequently contract and act as almost an elastic band. So moving on to uh, agility and change of direction. Um, this, just before we get into the specifics, we need to understand that agility is um, change of direction with a stimulus. So change of direction is simply the physical side of agility. So how fast, can, for example, from point A and um, then and then travel to point B. Um, whereas agility involves that, but it's in reaction to a stimulus. So we're going to um, ignore this factor for this presentation simply because this is likely going to come anticipation, knowledge of situation from experience in the specific sport, but the physical capacity is all direction, and that's what we can actually train. Um, so agility or, or change of direction is characterized by basically multi-directional accelerations and decelerations. So we need to quickly travel a short distance quickly accelerate and then change in a given direction and accelerate again. Um, 
in terms of training for agility or change of direction, this is going to, if we can increase our maximum speed and acceleration prior to doing this sort of training, our potential is going to be enhanced. This is because um, if we can simply, if we're faster, the point at which we, can, if we're faster and we can accelerate faster, the point at which we can move from point A to B is going to be faster, and therefore the points that we move from A to B to C to D will be therefore faster. So um, it's recommended that um, acceleration and max speed training are probably going to uh, precede this change of direction training. This is generally change of direction training is going to be pretty uh, important for most team sports because they seem the characteristics of most of these team sports seem to require these sort of short and sharp acceleration and decelerations. Um, and training exercises to to help us improve this these qualities are going to be very specific to the sport. So in terms of what distance are they traveling, what uh, direction are they changing direction in, how many direction changes are they doing, and how long um, is the total work duration for. So no real uh, good generic responses here. It has to be pretty specific to the sport, and the foundation is going to be built from speed and acceleration training. And last but not least, we have uh, speed endurance. And this is basically the ability to maintain a high level of speed. So this is going to be pretty much only important for, invent for events uh, in track. So things like 100 meters, 200 meters, and 400 meters, where these athletes need to sustain a high speed for a extended duration. These, again, are going to be built. Um, the foundations of speed endurance is going to be built by speed and acceleration training, um, which is likely going to precede this, this, uh, these methods of training. But um, essentially, the speed endurance training is going to be, again, specific to the event. So a 100-meter athlete might do... Th something like a 20 meter 20 meter flies as a training for that because they only they are probably going to reach max speed at about 40 50 meters and then try and sustain that for the rest of the race for something like a 400 meter runner they um they need to sustain a short a sub maximal pace but they need to sustain that for a lot longer so maybe things like 200 meter sub maximal like 90% sprints for a 400 meter athlete is going to be more uh, beneficial for them. And just to finish off, these are some examples of how we might program um, some speed training. So at the top, for example, we've got a track athlete, and of the bigger the um, the riding, the more the em the more the emphasis is on that training quality. So a track athlete, we might have a a program where we start off focusing more on acceleration and those force-based qualities. Then we might start focusing on maximum speed, so trying to get them as fast as possible. And then we might, depending on what sort of uh, what sort what that specific event is, we might then transfer that with some specific speed endurance training. Also, keeping everything in the um, program along but the, it's just not as emphasized For something like a team sport athlete we're still probably going to emphasize acceleration followed by maximum speed and then we're going to again transfer all that with um with doing some specific agility training to their event and that's it thanks for listening uh check out the next episode thanks